Hey guys, Celine Yako for Rusty Beauties here. We are in the process of rebuilding a Triumph TR6 engine here. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you probably know which one this is. So for one reason or another, we need to calculate our compression ratio in this engine. So I decided to make a separate video about this topic, how to calculate our ratio. All right, and before we figure out how to calculate compression ratio, let's figure out what the compression ratio is. And I know guys that most of you who follow my channel are very technical and you know everything about it, but there are some other people who are, I'm sure are gonna be interested to learn more about it. So, so a compression ratio is the ratio between our non-compressed volume of the cylinder and our compressed volume of the cylinder. So let's say if we have a piston with a connecting rod and stuff like that, and the piston at bottom dead center creates a volume here above that is our non-compressed volume. So in the head we have a combustion chamber and the cylinder is a cylinder. And in between we have also our gasket. That's important components to know about. So the volume above the piston and bottom dead center is our non-compressed volume, which includes our cylinder volume, the volume of the combustion chamber, uh, plus the volume of the little cylinder here created by our gasket. But we're gonna get back to that. And our compressed volume is gonna be virtually the same thing, but now the piston is gonna be at its top dead center. So again, we have the combustion chamber at top. So that's our compressed volume here, when the piston is at top dead center. So, our compression ratio is the ratio between our non-compressed volume when the piston is at bottom dead center and our compressed volume when the piston is at top dead center. So let's say, just for the sake of this video, if we say this volume here is 10 cc and this volume here is 100 cc, our compression ratio is going to be 100 to 10 or 10 to 1. So, in other words, very simple words, this volume is 10 times bigger than this volume. That's what compression ratio is. How much bigger is our non-compressed volume compared to our compressed volume? So, the formula would be our ratio equals our non-compressed volume divided by our compressed volume. Okay, so that's simple. So let's see what information we need to calculate our non-compressed volume and what information we need to calculate our compressed volume. So if this is our cylinder, it's our piston at bottom dead center, the deck, right? this is where the block ends. Then on top, we have a head and our combustion chamber right? with our valves and our spark plug. <laughs> and this is our gasket, because that's important to know that we also have a gasket. I'm over-exaggerating with the thickness of the gasket, but that's so we can figure it out. So this inside here is our non-compressed volume. So how can we calculate it? We can divide it in some separate components and add them together. The first component would be from the surface of the piston at bottom dead center to the surface of the piston at top dead center. This volume from this surface to this surface at top dead center is gonna be our first component. So we need volume of the stroke. Our second component is gonna be the volume above the piston, from, from the piston to the top of the cylinder, to the deck. So that's our volume above piston at top dead center. Then we have the volume of the gasket. That's why I over-exaggerated with the thickness of the gasket, because I can show you here another piece that we need to add, and that's the, the volume created by the gasket. Basically, from the bottom of the gasket to the top, top of the gasket, which means the thickness of the gasket. So we need to add to our components here the volume of the gasket. And the last but not least is the volume of our combustion chamber inside the head with the spark plug in because that 
takes a little bit away from the volume. So the volume of the combustion chamber. So these are the four components that we need so we can calculate our total non-compressed volume. And our compressed volume, that is the volume at top dead center. So if the piston is here, what is left? Only the volume of, uh, above the piston to the top of the cylinder. We also have this volume here, which is the gasket volume and our combustion chamber. The only difference between the two volumes is the volume of our stroke between the top dead center and the bottom dead center. So basically these are the four components that we need to find here. So this is our one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So if we look closely here, our volume one is a cylinder, a cylinder with the height of the stroke of the piston. Number two is a cylinder again. So this is a cylinder with a different height. Also the gasket volume is basically a cylinder with a very, very short height. And then only the combustion chamber is something with uh, compound shapes there that is very complicated to calculate. So this is the only volume that we're going to have to actually physically measure. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. But number one, two, and three, we can do with formulas. And this is very simple. So how do we find a volume of a cylinder? The volume of a cylinder is equal to the area of the circle, which represents the bottom or the top of the cylinder multiplied by the height of the cylinder. So how do we find an area of a circle? We square the radius and we multiply it by pi. And then that area, we're gonna have to multiply by the height of the cylinder. So let's come back here. So we need the volume of the stroke. The volume of the stroke would be equal to the radius the radius of the cylinder, which is going to be our bore divided by 2. And we need that squared multiplied by pi, which we know is 3.14, multiplied by the height of this stroke, the stroke of our crankshaft. And this and this we can find from our manual. So that was 1, right? Number two is the volume above the piston at top dead center. That would be equal to the same thing. The volume of the cylinder divided by two squared times 3.14 multiplied by the height of this cylinder, which is going to be top of the piston to top of the cylinder at top dead center. So distance from top of the piston at top dead center to top of the cylinder. This we need to measure. Number three is our volume of the gasket. The volume of the gasket would be this diameter divided by 2 to represent our radius. The diameter D of the gasket divided by 2 squared multiplied by 3.14 and then of course multiplied by the height of the cylinder which in this case is going to be the thickness compressed because when the gasket is new it has certain thickness but then when it's crushed it compresses and that's its thickness that we, we're looking for. And the last one, number four, is our combustion chamber. Well that one we have to physically measure. So the volume of the combustion chamber we need to measure. So what we have to find out here, all the unknown stuff for us for now is the bore, we need the stroke, uh, we need to find the distance from top of the piston, top dead center to top of cylinder. We need to know diameter of gasket opening and 
we need the gasket thickness. And the last one is the volume of the combustion chamber. Of course, I didn't mention here, it's very important also the shape of the piston, because some pistons have a dish here. So, of course, that needs to be added to the non-compressed volume and to the compressed volume again. Or, some pistons have a dome. Then, you have to subtract that from your non-compressed or compressed volume. But, in our case, we have a really flat piston, so we're not going to take that in consideration. I'm just mentioning it here, just so you know. So from here, we're going to become a little bit more particular about the engine that we have in our hands. The bore, the spec for TR6 engine is 2.9400, but we're reboring the block to plus 20 tau. So our bore total is going to be 2.9600. That's the bore of our cylinder. Our stroke is 3.70. Four inches. The distance from the top of the piston at top dead center to the top of the cylinder for this particular engine is zero because the piston always comes all the way up to the deck. It's like even with the deck. The diameter of the gasket is 2.9400, same as this spec. So this is the gasket that I removed from this engine and I actually measured it and it shows uh, 25 tau, so 0 0.025. Like most of the gasket manufacturers, they, if, if you look for the spec, they would give you also their uh, compressed thickness. But for us, we're going to just say it is 0 0.025. And the combustion chamber, of course, it's a question mark for us and we need to figure that out. But while we are still sitting here, let's calculate the other three components here with our numbers that we have right now. Our first measurement, the volume of the stroke equals the bore divided by two squared times 3.14 times the stroke. Now we know that the bore is 2.9600. 2.9600 divided by two squared times 3.14 four times the stroke, the stroke is 3.7400. That would be 1.48 squared. So notice how I said here 48, but I wrote down 45 and that messed up a little bit my result, the final result, but the formulas are correct. So this is what's important for the sake of this video, not the final result of my engine. I figured that out later. Times 3.14 times 3.74. That would be 2.1025. Multiplied by 3.14 times 3.74. That would be 6.6018. Multiplied by 3.74. 24.6907. So our volume of our stroke equals to 24.9607 cubic inches or 409 cubic centimeters. So the volume of our stroke is 409 cubic centimeters. So number two is the volume above the piston from top dead center to the top of the cylinder equals some number multiplied by, by another number multiplied by the distance from the top of the piston to the top of the cylinder at top dead center. And as we said, this distance is zero. So whatever number multiplied by whatever number multiplied by zero is zero. So we already know that this number is zero. We don't need to do all these complicated calculations. And then the last thing is gonna be our gasket. That would be equal to the diameter of the gasket divided by two squared. So we know that the diameter of the gasket is 2.9400. So 2.9400 over two squared multiplied by 3.14 multiplied by the gasket thickness, which we said is 0 0.025.
uh, 1.87. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> that should be 1.47, not 87. That equals 3.4969. 10.9803 at 4.498 cubic centimeters that's what we need the cubic centimeters and now the only thing that we don't know that we still need for our calculation is the volume of the combustion chamber which we need to physically measure no way around that so let's do that all right, so we're here at the head now, and I'm gonna tilt it a little bit. So you see now it has a slope here. And I want that because I want to put this piece of acrylic that I made that I'm gonna position in such a way that when we put liquid inside through this hole i drilled another one next to it for the air to go out because i don't have a burette normally you would use a burette here and it works well but i don't have a burette so i have a syringe that we're gonna fill up with liquid and we're gonna drop a known amount of liquid inside and whenever it's all full it's gonna tell us what exactly the volume is so my syringe is 60 milliliters which is equal to 60 cubic centimeters. Normally the recommended fluid here would be uh, rubbing alcohol or something like that, but I don't have rubbing alcohol. I found something similar, which is uh, my gun wash that I clean my uh, painting gun, for example, with. But when I overfilled it, it splashed all over and started erasing my grades here on my syringe. And that's important. I need to know how much exactly I put inside. So I took a new syringe and I'm gonna fill it up with water and we're gonna go from there. But first, we're gonna position our glass here. To be able to seal it though, because water is gonna come out, we're gonna have to use some uh, Vaseline. Just gonna put a little bit around. Even if you have your valves out already, you can just put Vaseline on the seats, on the valve seats, and drop the valves in, press them lightly on top, and they're gonna be sealed. And I'm gonna try to position these holes right on the highest spot, which is there. And now when I press it down, it is gonna seal. There you go. So all we have to do now is we have to pour water. And of course I have my spark plug in, otherwise everything is gonna leak out. Also the spark plug affects the volume because it protrudes inside. So we have a 60 milliliters of water or 60 cubic centimeters of water here. And the problem with water, that's why it's not recommended, is because it creates those bubbles inside. But we can live with that, right? So let's see. if we can do that now. I hope we don't create any bubbles down there. That's why we put it on an angle. Wow, this takes a lot. Okay, it is now full and wow, it is like really close to 60. I would say that this chamber is 59 and a half cubic centimeters because we're really close to zero we just have half a cubic centimeter here all right so back to our calculations here now we know that our combustion chamber is 59.5 cubic centimeters great now we have all the information that we need 
All right, so I figured out my mistakes here, so I have to reshoot part of this video. <laughs> so this is not 1.45, it's 1.48. And from there, all the numbers change till the end. And my final result here is not 409 cc, it's 421.53 cc for the uh, volume of the stroke. And same here, this is not 1.87, it is 1.47 for the volume of the gasket and that changes all the numbers below. So my volume of the gasket is 2.779 cubic centimeters. Forget about this number. So if we come back here, we said that our ratio equals our non-compressed volume divided by our compressed volume. All right, so like we said, let's calculate our compressed volume first, which is gonna be the combustion chamber, which is 59. 5 cubic centimeters plus the volume of the piston to the top of the cylinder at top dead center which is zero and of course the volume of the gasket which is 2.779 so we have a total of compressed volume of 62.279 and our non-compressed volume is going to be 62.279 279, which is our compressed volume plus the volume of the stroke which is 42153. The total volume is going to be 908384. So our ratio is going to be 483809 over 6 Two, two, seven, nine, or a seven point seven six eight four. Seven point seven six eight four. So that's our compression ratio for this engine. So normally the spec for TR six is seven point five to one but we are reboring these cylinders a little bit that's why i guess it is a little bit bigger it's 7.76 but anyways that's our final number here so all these calculations just to come up with this number <laughs> so that's it guys we quickly calculated well not that quickly but we easily measured the volume of our combustion chamber and we did all the calculations to come up with the compression ratio for this engine. My concern here was if I reface this head, were we gonna be into a way too high compression ratio? But we are perfectly good because this compression ratio here is pretty low and that's how TR6s come, but we can definitely increase it a little bit by shaving this head a little bit. But you know what? I used to have a calculator that I created once upon a time for all these things. Of course, there's calculators online that you can just enter your numbers that you have, your stroke, your cylinder bore, your uh, combustion chamber, and it comes up with the answer, but it is so much more fun to do all the calculations yourself, isn't it? Anyway, so now because I am who I am, I'm gonna go on the computer and I'm gonna make a new Excel chart and that's going to be my calculator where I can just enter those numbers and that's going to give me the ratio automatically. So if you have the patience, stay with me and we're going to create it together. So we said that our ratio is equal to the total volume divided by the compressed volume. So this cell is going to be equal to this cell divided by this cell great now it gives us error because we're dividing by zero but we're gonna put formulas here to calculate the total volume and the compressed volume so how do we calculate the total volume we need the stroke volume we need the volume above the piston at the top dead center to the top of cylinder. We need the gasket volume and we need the combustion chamber volume. 
all this needs to be in CC, right? So the sum of all these is going to give me the total volume. And then this number we need to transfer here as well. So this is going to be equal to this cell, right? Okay. Uh, the compressed volume is pretty much the same thing, but without the stroke volume. So only these three. And these three, of course, this is going to be equal to this, this is going to be equal to this, and this is going to be equal to this. And the sum of these three is going to be my compressed volume. So this is going to be equal to this. So now we only need to find the numbers to put here. How do we find them? We need the cylinder bore, we need the crank stroke, we need the distance from the piston at top dead center to the top of the cylinder. We need the diameter of the gasket opening. We need the gasket or the compressed gasket thickness. And we need, of course, the combustion chamber. So all this we have in the spec, but in the spec it is in inches. So we need to transfer them to metric. So let's start putting numbers here. Uh, like we said, the cylinder bore is 2.96. Let me put some more decimals here. Okay. So the cylinder bore, after reboring this engine, is going to be 2.96. The crank stroke is... 3.74 the distance from the piston top dead center to the top of the cylinder in this particular engine is going to be zero the diameter of the gasket opening is 2.94 the compressed gas gasket thickness we said is 0 0.025 and the combustion chamber volume is already in metric we measured it in metric and that was 59.5 cubic centimeters okay so to transfer these in metric, we're going to have to multiply them by 25.4 because one inch equals 25.4 millimeters. So this cell is going to be equal to this cell multiplied by 24.5 or 25.4, sorry. And all these are going to be the same. So we, I just transferred the formula here. So all these are going to be in millimeters. So now we have our data here. Let's see how we're gonna calculate everything here. So the stroke volume, we said that the area of the circle of the cylinder multiplied by the height, which is our stroke. So the value of this cell is gonna equal to our cylinder bore. Now we're going into millimeters. Our cylinder bore divided by two, which is our radius multiplied by itself because we have to square it divided by two and then we multiply this by 3.14 which is pi and we multiply this by the height of the cylinder which is our stroke well that's a lot yeah because this now here is cubic millimeters but we need cubic centimeter. So we know that in one cubic centimeter, there's thousand cubic millimeters because one cubic centimeter is 10 by 10 by 10 millimeters. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1000. So now we have to divide this by 1000 and this is our total. The volume from the piston top dead center to the top of the cylinder is pretty much the same, but at different height. So this volume is gonna be equal to Again, the cylinder bore divided by two multiplied by the cylinder bore divided by two multiplied by 3.14 and multiplied by the height, which is the distance from the piston top dead center to the top of the cylinder, which is this cell. In our case, this is zero. And of course, again, divided by 1000. And for us, it comes to zero now, but if we change this to, for example, if we have a half inch there, let's say, 
that will, that will change automatically here. But in this case, for this engine, we have zero, so this cell is going to be zero. Then we have a gasket volume. So the gasket volume is going to be equal to the diameter of the gasket opening divided by two, multiplied by the gasket opening divided by two, multiplied by 3.14, multiplied by the gasket thickness, which is this cell, divided by 1000. So our gasket volume also is different as I made a mistake with the calculations there. And the combustion chamber, of course, is equal to this. We can't calculate that, we have to measure it. And now our calculations are automatically done and we have 7.76 uh, to 1 ratio for this engine. Okay, so that's it. So this time I'm going to save this calculator and I will know that when I put my numbers here, my correct numbers, this, is, this needs to be in CC, that's going to calculate my ratio for any engine. I can play now with these numbers and see if I reduce the volume of the combustion chamber, what's going to happen to my ratio. Let's say I reduce the volume by uh, half cubic centimeter, let's say it is going to be 29, that's going to increase my ratio a little bit. So I can definitely take 10 tau off. So that's it guys, now you know what the compression ratio is, you know how to measure your combustion chamber volume, you know how to calculate the ratio, and even you know how to make your own calculator so you don't need to calculate it every time. Next time you just punch in your numbers and your compression ratio is calculated automatically by Excel, which doesn't make mistakes like I did. <laughs> Anyway, so that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and subscribing. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for actual work videos on the cars. I, I don't just sit on the computer and punch numbers. I also work sometimes. <laughs> so thanks for watching guys. Bye.